Okay, good morning, everybody. Welcome to BC314, Media and Technology and Ministry. And uh, we are making progress, learning how to uh, use the tools that are available there for us in the area of media and technology and of course, use it to serve God and serve people. Let's pray. Then we're going to get started. I just request somebody to <clears throat> um, please unmute your mic if you can and just uh, pray with the class and we get started. Friends, why don't you think your mic's fine? Thank you. Thank you, Lord. Thank you this time, Lord, and this morning. We submit in your hand, Lord, uh, as we are going to learn. And this uh, subject, Lord, help us to uh, learn that we can apply in this uh, ministry, in our ministry, that this is a uh, very technology, but uh, how we will uh, use in our ministry. Help us to learn and Holy Spirit get us and guide us. I also submit the pastor. All the student in your hand. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you. All right. So today and um, tomorrow, so basically both the classes this week, um, I want to talk to us a little bit on some guidelines uh, or, you know, we would say best practices or um, some standards that we should keep in mind as we use graphics and videos uh, as part of our media ministry. Now, of course, uh, you know, the graphics and the videos will most likely be designed and created by the people who know how to do it. Right? So you, 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 will, you will have uh, somebody uh, doing this. They're, they're helping you. They may be volunteers. They may be staff. Uh, when we started APC, and I'm going back in the early days, uh, we just had volunteers. You know, somebody would do some graphics for us. And then we had a paid consultant. That means uh, this person was not working full time. Uh, they would just, you know, charge us for the pieces of work they did, you know. So we, we went, we, we, that's how we started in a very small way. Uh, we just had, you know, initially it was volunteers. In fact, our church logo was designed by a volunteer. Uh, he is, we, we didn't pay him for it. Uh, we're still using that same logo that he did for us. Uh, he, of course, he's now, uh, he, he's now gone overseas. But, you know, those early days, it was just volunteers who were helping us uh, for various things. And uh, and then slowly, you know, we were able to pay for somebody to do the work for us. And then later on, uh, we were able to have full-time staff because the amount of work also increased. Uh, so, you know, uh, so you will have people uh, helping you. But what at least I've seen in my own experience is that uh, these people are good in their work. They know how to design graphics. They know how to do videos. They know how to do it. But they may not always think from the church perspective. They may not see things from, you know, the way you as a Christian leader or you as a pastor uh, would see. They may not know what's important necessarily. Uh, they may not know the guidelines within which to do their work because, uh, you know, really when you're creating a graphic or you're creating a video, uh, when it goes out, it's not only communicating a message, it's also representing your church, your organization. And so that has to be kept in mind, right? So they may not always think like that. And so over the years, you know, we we had to, there's a lot of learning. You know, both for from my side or as a as a pastor, as a leader, and then from their side as technical people who do the work. You know, so we had to uh, we had to learn a lot. Okay, 
But thank God over the years, uh, you know, and also out there on online, there are a lot of churches, a lot of Christian ministries who are sharing their knowledge, their learning over the years in using media, I meaning using graphics and videos, they're, they're sharing it. And uh, so we can learn from them as well. You know, uh, what is the right way to do graphics for Christian church, Christian ministry? What are some things to keep in mind when you're doing videos? And so I'm just, uh, you know, going to share those guidelines today and then some other things tomorrow uh, when you are creating graphics and video. Now, these are things that you need to communicate to the people doing the work and then you have to hold them accountable to this, you know, to, to these things, uh, some thoughts. So although you're a pastor or a Christian leader and you're not doing the graphics and you're not doing the video, uh, these are things you must keep in your mind because you know, one is, you need to check these things. And obviously, uh, you know, I, I don't always check every graphic or video. I've communicated the standards, I've communicated the guidance. In the early days, you know, I used to check because before the videos or, or the graphics go out, I used to check myself. Uh, but then after that, it became too much and, you know, I stopped doing that. But through that, I learned, okay, these are the things that, you know, I need to tell the people, look out for, don't do this, do this, do it like this. And so we documented a lot of these guidelines and, you know, put it in writing. So now I don't check, I just let them do the work. Uh, certain things I might check, they they still would ask me some questions, but uh, these guidelines have been documented. So the team knows, the teams, the people know, and they try to just follow it. So I want to share this with you so that you can also think like this. Uh, and uh, even though you're not doing the work, the graphics or the video, you can share it with the people who are doing the work and also keep these thoughts in mind so that the media work that is put out uh, must, you know, uh, follow certain standards and guidelines to, to represent the church or the ministry correctly. Right. So let's look at that. Look, look at some of these things. And I've shared the PDF uh, in the classwork section, so you have this available. And um, so we'll cover some today, and we'll pick up uh, tomorrow. Right. So guidelines for graphics and videos. So part of our media and technology, you're going to be using graphics and videos. Uh, and uh, what are some of the guidelines? Now there are some useful. Uh, websites you can go to. Uh, I've just given two links, but there are really a lot more. Uh, what, what I mean is uh, churches and organi Christian organizations who are sharing their learning. You know, they have already done a lot of work in graphics and videos and media, and, and they are sharing that learning with, uh, with the rest of us. So it's good to go and learn from them, see what they're doing. So some general thoughts is it's good to stay current with what's happening in media and design globally, you know. So and, uh, you may, if you are interested, you may do this, uh, but surely encourage your team members, you know, the, the media people, uh, the IT people to stay current. You know, uh, one simple way is you just see what others are doing. You know, what are other churches doing globally? Like I said, Many of them are actually sharing their experiences. They're sharing their learning. So we can learn from them, you know, what are the right or wrong way to use media, graphics, videos. Um, and, uh, but of course, you know, uh, 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 we need to stay, um, what to say, uh, rooted in the word of God, right? That means while our work is contemporary, uh, we, uh, we uh, we are we are not compromising as far as the word of God is concerned, right? Then understand that graphics and video is actually a communication process. That means you are actually communicating something to people. You know, so don't just think, oh, I, I have to do a graphic uh, to make it a you know uh, because I have to put something on uh, the website or social media, no, there's actually a message going out 
in every graphic, in every video. And I'm sure we, we know this. But that means you should be very clear. What is your message? That's what are you trying to say to the people? And who is your audience? Whom are you actually targeting in that particular graphic, even a single graphic that's made or a video that's made? You know, who is your, who are you speaking to? Uh, that must be very clear. What are you trying to say? And who are you speaking to? Right? Otherwise, the graphic will be just a jumble of things or the video may be you know, putting things together. The message may be very confusing or may not be clear. Some of the simple things that keep in mind is uh, the fonts that you're using in your graphics and video must be simple and readable. You know, go for simplicity. And otherwise, you know, the graphics people, may, they may want to go with something fancy and you can't even read it. Sometimes, you know, I, in the early days, I used to tell, I used to, this was such a simple thing to me, but I used to just send things back to the teams. Hey, change it. You can't even read the font. It's so difficult, you know. So you're always thinking from the end viewer perspective. That means the person who's going to see the, the audience who are going to read the graphic or watch the video. Uh, the font has to be readable. It's got to be clear. It's got to be the right size. It's got to be simple. Right? Similarly, the color choices, you know, uh, if you just leave it to the media person, they may just choose all kinds of colors. Uh, they may not be thinking in terms of being relevant. And sometimes certain colors have certain meanings and connotations. So you got to be also sensitive to that, you know. So, uh, so in the use of certain, and this is depending on which part of the world you are, of course, you know. Uh, so be sensitive in the use of those colors and how it's being used. For instance, in India, the saffron color is very sensitive. Right? So, you know, if, if you're using that, you have to be careful and because it has certain sensitivity attached to that color. And uh, so those kinds of things, uh, be careful. Uh, the, you know, the, the, the graphic person may not think or think in those terms, but you as a pastor's leader, you know, you got to make sure they watch out for these things. Uh, and also don't overcrowd, make sure that the graphics, the video is not overcrowded, you know, leave a lot of space around it. You know, otherwise sometimes they want to put everywhere something and the graphic gets very crowded. Uh, this simple thought. And then, you know, use um, what is referred to as visual hierarchy. That means, you know, play with the font sizes uh, for emphasis. So, you know, the most important thing should have the largest font, you know, and things that are of lesser importance can have smaller font size and be positioned, you know, in, in other places. So, uh, think about what you want the viewer to see first and you, how you want the eye to move. So the eye is going to move from the biggest to the smallest, from the heaviest to the lightest. You know, so visually think about these things. So uh, the, 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 uh, the, the graphic person may not know what is the most important thing you are trying, you want to stand out. For example, the conference theme may be the one that you really want to stand out, you know that uh, maybe the conference theme is on power evangelism. So you want that to stand out. The graphic person may not know. For him, power evangelism is just two words that have to be on the graphic. But for you, that's the main thing you want to get across. So you need to tell the graphic person, hey, power evangelism should be the biggest font because I want that to hit the eye first, you know? And then, so these are things that as a leader, you have to make it very clear to the graphic person, because they may not know these, they may not be thinking along these lines. You know, what is the most message you want to come out on the graphic? So on, okay? So uh, once the graphic is done, you need to look at the graphic as a viewer. You know, is, is the message coming across? What, what I want to say as a pastor, as a leader, is that message coming across to my audience? Or does this graphic appeal to the people I want to reach? Suppose you are, you, you are going to have a youth conference. 
you tell a graphic person, hey, can you design a youth conference, uh, a graphic for my youth conference? But he is using images of uh, older people, you know, uh, hopefully they won't do it, but I'm just saying, then you immediately know that images that were used, that are used in the graphic doesn't connect with the audience. You're doing a youth conference, he's used images of older people, or maybe even professionals. You know, or he's yeah, you know, he's having people with in suits, but uh, you know, tie and suit. But you are reaching out to you know, uh, youth, you know, maybe teenagers and uh, young adults. They're not interested in tie and suit, and so there's a there's a disconnect between what is used in the graphic and the audience you're trying to reach. So these are things you need to. You can pull up, you know, and say, hey. Uh, the graphic is not communicating my message or the message I want to the audience that I'm trying to go to, you know. So these are things you have to look out for, okay? Um, just at a high level, uh, keep these things in mind. Uh, are you all with me so far? Um, yeah. Let me just check. Uh, um, everyone's with me so far. You're getting what I'm saying. Okay. It's ready for your response on the chat. Okay. All right. Okay. Let's go forward. So now, uh, in terms of uh, graphic design software packages, um, yeah, of course there are commercially available, this is uh, Adobe uh, Creative Cloud Suite is what is uh, probably everyone's using, or not everyone, but many people are using it, Photoshop and Design Illustrator and everything else that comes with that. Uh, that's uh, something professionally you can use. And as a church, you would uh, get a nonprofit discount, which we also get. So it makes it very affordable uh, for Nonprofits, but if uh, you know you don't want to pay for it, then there are free applications that you, web applications that you can use for graphic design, Canva, Genially, and Spark. So you could use these, and they're free. So you know you could have people use them, use these software packages just for you to know, and just know that there are free web applications you can use. So you don't always have to go and pay especially in the early stages when you're starting your ministry and uh, you, you're having some volunteers do things for you or maybe you are uh, having some even consultants. If they don't have their own uh, software, you can guide them to do using any of these. Okay. Now, now we're getting, getting a little bit more detail. Some of the, some other things that I want you to think about uh, in terms of just the graphic design and then we talk about the video design. And tomorrow I'll be talking about uh, search engine optimization. That means when you are creating these graphics in the videos, uh, they also contribute towards uh, the visibility of your website and so on. So what are some of the things to make sure that, you know, when the, when the graphics are created or the videos are created and are, are put out there that they are picked up by search engines. So I will share that with you tomorrow. Uh, these are thoughts to keep in mind. Right? Um, they may be a little technical, but uh, from my experience, uh, usually these are things that the, like I said earlier, the, the media people, or IT people, media people may not be thinking about from a church perspective, right? Uh, they may be very good professionally in their work, but they're not seeing necessarily from a church or a ministry perspective, and therefore you need to emphasize or you need to hold them up uh, for these things, right? So uh, from a style style perspective for graphic design, see what's happening. You know, there are a lot of new ways of communicating through graphics uh, is happening around the world. So, you know, look at some contemporary churches, uh, see what they're doing. Uh, very important, you know, the images that are being used in the graphic, you have to be very careful. That's nothing suggestive, questionable, 
inappropriate, violent, indecent, provocative, right? So, you know, uh, this again, uh, you you have to emphasize and re-emphasize to the media people. Uh, um, you know, this area of being questionable, uh, you know, especially in your in, in your context, that's something you only you can answer the, the audience that you're speaking to, right? So you need to be careful about the images you use. Yeah. Simple things like, you know, uh, when you if you have the image of a of a, a man or a woman, and on which finger the ring is placed, is actually sending a message. Now we may not even think about it or the graphics, but in fact, just recently, uh, maybe a month or month or two ago, I had to correct one of the. I mean, I had to send one of the graphics back simply because it had the image of a of a person. And the ring was on a question and on a finger that that actually was sending a different message. There was, you know, when you have a ring on the the ring on the on, a, on the on the ring finger, okay, this is saying I'm married. But if the ring is and uh, the color of the ring is different, uh, and on a, it's on a different finger, it's sending a different message. You know, so even that simple thing, uh, 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 the person doing the image doesn't is not thinking about it. You know, they just okay, I need somebody, and the, they're not looking at that you will have to pick it up. And now if that goes on a church website or if that goes on you know, something you're doing in the ministry and, and somebody who understands that will question, hey, why is the church putting out the picture of somebody with a ring or this color ring? It was a black ring on uh, 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 one of the fingers. And if you, look, if you actually Google it, you'll find out that a black ring on this finger actually is, means this. And and somebody who understands it will get a wrong message, right? It's a very simple thing, but it's it's communication. You're sending a message to somebody, and so you have to be very careful of those you know these these kinds of things. So what images are being used, you know, uh, on 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 uh, in the graphics? They have to be very careful. Um, Font style and size, like I said, uh, you know, uh, use fonts that are clear, legible, not too difficult to read. Uh, another thing in graphics is uh, being very uniform uh, uh, in the sense that you know you want creativity, but there's also got to be some sense of cohesion in the work you're doing. You know, uh, that okay, yeah, graphics that are coming out of this church, this uh, this one. Uh, this organization, there's consistency. So if there's a video and a, and a graphic, you know, uh, the fonts uh, announcing the same event, there should be uniformity, right? Otherwise there'll be a clash. Uh, so for an event, all the, all the graphics, all the videos look, if that event is being promoted or presented with cohesion, with uniformity, right? The other thing is uh, when, when when you're using people's faces, you know, you've been, you know, showing people, uh, use people that are relevant to the audience, you know. So, for example, uh, again, that's something I had to correct recently. We were announcing job opportunities at APC, right, uh, to work in our Bangalore office. And uh, our, our media team was using all, uh, you know, Western faces, uh, in the thing. Now, it has no, no connection. That's not the kind of people we are planning to hire to work at Bangalore office. They cannot. It's, you know, you, we don't get visas and that. So I had to correct them and say, guys, we are announcing job opportunities for people to work in APC Bangalore office. But we are putting all the faces of people, you know, Western faces. And we are, this announcement is going to people sitting in Bangalore. So you, know, you should use faces that are relevant. Like it should be, you know, the Indian faces because the, only those are the people who can work in this position. So it's a simple thought, but it's sending a message, you know, and, and somebody sitting in the audience watching this, what are they going to think? 
you know, hey, they're announcing a job for people to work in Bangalore office and showing all Western faces. There's a mismatch, there's a disconnect. So now, of course, if we are announcing our Bible college, yeah, I, you know, intensely tell them, use faces of people from all over the world because uh, we, uh, the Bible college is, uh, we want people from all over the world to come and study with us online because it's an online thing and it's happening on the e-learning platform. So you could just be free to, to and, and intentionally show a global setting, use pictures of, of faces of people from different parts of the world because we want that. And that's our audience, people from anywhere and everywhere in the world. So that video or that those graphics have people all over the world. But this video, this graphic context, who are we addressing? You know, so these are things that at least, and all this happened recent times, uh, even though, you know, people have been working, our media team, people have been, some of them have been working seven years, eight years, you know, with us for a long time. Sometimes they forget, or they may not always think in those things. And so you need to watch out and tell them, hey, uh, there's a mismatch. Uh, I hope I'm making sense. Um, okay, and uh, you know th these things will have to come from you uh, as a ministry leader or as a pastor because sometimes the media team would miss it. Right now, very similar to graphics, very similar to graphics, um, we need to have uh, some guidelines for video. Right. Uh, there, there's, there's a lot of overlap, similarity in this. Right. Same thing in the videos, images, and songs. Uh, you don't want anything inappropriate. And uh, if anybody requests for anything that's inappropriate, you know, there should be a way to put some checks in place. And uh, uh, if we are using footage, video footage of or pictures or video footage of people from within the church, you know, uh, show them well. You know, don't show them <laughs> in things that, you know, um, makes them feel uncomfortable. So that's very important, that, you know, because you are selecting photos or videos of people in the congregation, which you may have caught during events, and then you're reusing it in video promotions. Always, you know, be sensitive to their feelings, use them, show them in good light. Uh, simple things like don't show anything that's that, that miscommunicates things. So even a uh, 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 you know, if you're doing a video for children or a video for the youth, you know, you've got to be sensitive to it. Like, don't show them doing things that they shouldn't be doing, you know, or, and so on. So uh, these kind of things, you know, being very sensitive in, you know, what are the background images, graphics, videos that are being used, you have to be careful. Right? Um, some other things, uh, you know, I'm just going in through some of the details here. Uh, keep in mind on the platform on which this is being used. So uh, Facebook, Instagram, or now even on YouTube shorts, you, know, you have those very short, short videos. So here people are not looking, for, you know, the, the shorter the video, the more impactful it is, right? So the videos must be kept very short. So that's why, you know, um, we do different length videos. We have, you know, for example, even for our sermons, we have, there is the full sermon video, which may be about 45 minutes long. Then we do a five minute key points. Then we do a 60, a 60 second or sometimes it's just 30 second sermon highlight, you know, so, uh, there are those who may want to watch the full sermon. There are those who want just a sermon highlight in five minutes. And then there's there's some who just, okay, what was the main thing? The sermon highlight, which is in 60 seconds or less. So you're, you know, you're keeping in mind that um, there are different audiences, different platforms where you need different duration videos. Okay. Uh, so in, 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 uh, videos, uh, turn on subtitles, so that if uh, there's no audio mode, at least they can get the text of what is being said. And uh, you can also generate transcripts automatically uh, on YouTube. So if somebody wants to just quickly glance through the transcript, they can do it. 
uh, in the voices that you're using for videos, use clear, exciting voices and relevant voices, you know. Uh, so uh, just depending on what you're announcing, use voices that are appropriate and relevant to that announcement. Um, and don't use voices that are dull and unexciting. You know, you're losing uh, the impact of that video. And along with the audio, that is the voice, wherever possible also have text. So it's a double impact. They're not only listening, but they're also seeing, I mean, they're seeing, if they see the text, that is also making an impact. So wherever possible, use both audio and visual to uh, impact or get the message across. Uh, fonts, so like we said earlier, there should be consistency in the font usage across uh, the same event, whether it's on graphics and videos, there should be consistency. You can watch out for that. And then, you know, uh, other detailed standards. So, you know, these are standards we have given to our team. That means the way you display the date, time, and year. So, uh, if it's things that you're putting out, you know, for uh, uh, which is going to be seen by a global audience. Remember, the date formats are different, uh, uh, you know, in, in different parts of the world. So some people, you know, in North America, they would use month, day, and year. Uh, in other parts, we use day, month, and year. So it can be very confusing for certain people. So we, 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 we have, uh, you know, intentionally used uh, date, month as in the three letter word for the month, three letter for the month, and then the full form for the year. So we follow that standard. So regardless of which part of the world, people who see that graphic or the video will understand, you know, what so, uh, date it is. So these are simple things, but are very important because, you know, when you're putting things out for a global audience, you need to keep this in mind. Uh, so we've given standards like, okay, for the day of the week, you know, use clear abbreviations. Um, when you're displaying time, make it easy for them to know, right? It's 2 p.m. Others, uh, you say 14 hours, uh, then in there, they have to con convert it mentally. Or oh, 14 is actually 2 p.m. And sometimes they may convert that incorrectly and end up with the wrong time. So it's always, you know, for everybody's convenience, it's good to state something explicitly. And then uh, uh, we generate user-friendly URLs for people uh, to go online so on. So these are simple things you can think through on what would be relevant uh, in your area and use that. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, so this again, uh, the casting, the use of people's faces, uh, be very sensitive. Uh, uh, similar to the graphics and the videos, uh, be sensitive when you know, showing the videos of people. Uh, make sure it's relatable to your audience. If you're using people from the church, show them in good light. Uh, be sensitive when you're using pitch, you know, uh, pictures of children or teenagers. Get consent from the parents uh, so that parents are aware that you know the pictures of their children or teenagers being used in certain footage or graphics, do it with permission uh, and so on, okay? So these are, there's a quick um, run through on things for you to think about. Now you may not be using it, you know, you may or may not use all of this right away, but uh, over the years we've, you know, tried to uh, recognize the importance of having guidelines for your media team so that, uh, uh, the communication, the message that comes out, you know, uh, uh, is, is correct and it meets certain uh, standards. Um, everyone with me? Kiran, I see you sweating over there. What's happening? It's okay. You are, you guys are following? Okay. All right. So uh, I know I've covered just little ground. Uh, you know, to help us think on these things. Uh, any questions on this? Any 
maybe you have maybe you have had some experience or maybe you run into some problems with people who are doing graphics and media in in your area uh, we could talk about it tomorrow i will continue on the same thing uh, but i want to just look at it from a, a search engine perspective you know uh, on how we optimize these graphics and videos for search engines and also some things to keep in mind when you are uploading these things uh, to social media uh, platforms. Um, uh, you know, uh, the, the, the quality of the things may change by the time you, from what is done and what is uploaded. So that's another thing to keep in mind. So we'll cover that tomorrow. And then we will get into, uh, next week, we'll get into equipment. That means, you know, I just want to share as we go forward, what are the equipments we'll be using uh, just to give you an idea that this is what goes into, you know, uh, photography, video, live streaming, or audio, sorry, we do audio, video, live streaming, uh, uh, also um, in-house public address system. So these are things that you go, because um, a lot of these decisions, people come to you as a pastor leader, so what should we buy? And they may make recommendations, but uh, and finally the money is, you approve it. So you have to keep a few thoughts in mind. Okay. But any questions here from your experience uh, with media, people who are doing media for your church or ministry? Okay. Any any thoughts, any questions? Okay. All right. So um, we'll pick this up tomorrow and uh, take this forward. Um, keep these keep these things in mind, uh, so that you know at some point you can use them uh, when you have. Uh, media work being done for your church, for your ministry, okay? Let's close for today. I'm going to just request somebody to pray with us and dismiss us. Uh, we'll continue this tomorrow. Conan, if your mic is okay. Can you pray? Or maybe... Uh, can I pray? Can you hear me? Oh, go. Yes, we can hear you. Go ahead, please. Father, Lord, thank you for this wonderful time, oh Lord. Lord, <clears throat> Lord I pray for each every one of us, Lord. Lord, uh, thank you for the good connectivity, Lord. Lord, thank you for the subject uh, and understanding, Lord. Lord, uh, give us a, a good knowledge about uh, from this subject, Lord. Help us to learn more from this uh, subject, Lord in our uh, coming days, Lord. Lord, uh, thank you for Pastor Ash, Lord, and also those who people are attending the class, Lord. Lord, uh, protect us uh, in our ways, Lord, the rest of the day, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. All right. Thank you, everyone. So I'll see you all tomorrow. Uh, we have um, three hours tomorrow morning. We do Revelation Daniel, and then we continue with media technology. God bless. Enjoy the rest of your day. Bye now.